One of the things that I get asked about all the time is about keeping air pumps and do you need air in an aquarium? Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Zenzo and you are watching Tozawa Tanks. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that sub button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So before we get into the topic about air pumps, I have something to ask all of you. I have been getting so many questions, emails, private messages, comments in my videos about t-shirts. Now obviously I'm wearing one of my Tozawa Tanks t-shirts and I have a few of them that I wear just for my own use. And I've had a lot of you ask me about buying a Tozawa Tanks t-shirt. Now, here is a t-shirt that I have. And uh, this one's actually not for you guys. This is a uh, t-shirt for one of our viewers who won the subscriber giveaway that I had a while back. Um, V-Stag was unable to come to uh, California to do the tour with me, so I have a whole box of goodies for him. Filters and fish food and all kinds of stuff, as well as a Tazawa Tanks t-shirt. Now, when I ordered this, I ordered it from the same company that I got mine from here, and uh, I thought this might be a good time for me to maybe place a really large order with them and have t-shirts available for you guys on my website. Now, if that's something that you are interested in, I know I've gotten a lot of requests so far. I just don't know how serious you guys are about actually buying a t-shirt. I did think about the Teespring thing, but uh, decided that I, if I do um, sell t-shirts, I'd rather do it through my own website. So if you are interested in getting a Tazawa Tanks t-shirt, uh, the uh, logo will look just like this. So it'll be um, my fish logo as well as the, uh, the font here on top. If that's something that you would like to have and purchase, please let me know by commenting down below. If I feel like I get enough comments down below about buying a t-shirt, then I will strongly consider placing a large order with the t-shirt company so that I can send you out t-shirts. So if I do make t-shirts available at this time, it would only be for those of you in the United States um, for obvious reasons as far as shipping costs and things like that. I do know that a lot of you are outside of the US and Australia, the UK, Asia, South America, etc. So definitely I would uh, look into other options for you guys in the future as far as being able to order something online. But at this time it would only be available for those of you in the US. So again, if you are interested in getting a t-shirt from me like this, doesn't have to be a v-neck, I'll probably just do a regular crew neck um, and I'll have all the different sizes so they won't be extra snug and tight like mine are, um, but that's up to you. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if I get enough, uh, again, if I get enough people that show interest, then I will uh, look into placing an order. So on to the topic about air pumps and uh, having air in aquariums. Now it's very obvious and evident down here in my fish room that I do use air. I have air running all of my filtration down here every single one of my aquariums down in down here in the fish room is running on a central air system except for these two 55 gallon uh, grow out tubs here that are also running on air they're just running on uh, pumps like this rather than my essential air system uh, the only other filter i do have in this room that is not a sponge filter running on air is i have an extra hang on the back on oscar's tank here but there is a sponge filter in here so that does do a lot of the filtration he thinks I'm going to feed him because he just swam over here. Look at him. <laughs> but uh, I also have a hang on the back there as well. So the question is, do you need an air pump to pump air into your aquarium? Yes and no. So you don't need to have an air pump. Obviously, there are other ways of having filtration in your aquarium and water movement and uh, you know surface agitation, whether it be sump filters or canister filters hang on the back filters, etc. And I use all of those. I have some upstairs, I have wet dry filters, I have canister filters, hang on the back filters, etc. Um, but I also run sponges upstairs as well. So there are other ways of filtering your aquarium and, and uh, providing a lot of the attributes that a air pump and a sponge filter and or an air stone will provide, but they won't do it at the same cost. It is very inexpensive to run air to your tank. The actual pump will vary depending on the size and, the, and the, the needs of your aquarium. But a pump like this can be found uh, pretty easily, anywhere from $15 to $25, maybe a little bit more if you're getting kind of a fancy one. Um, I did have a company reach out to me to ask me if I'd like to test one of their products. So I did do some research and found that theirs was 
a little bit more on the uh, higher end as far as cost is concerned, but uh, we'll see if they send it to me. I can test it and let you guys know what I think. So besides filtering your aquarium with a sponge filter, etc., a couple of good things that a air pump will do for your aquarium, and I'm gonna put it down now, is it does a great job of creating surface agitation. So what is surface agitation really, and what does it do? Surface agitation is when the top of the water in your aquarium is moving. So anything that agitates that water, whether it be a power head or a wave maker or the cascading effect of the, of the hang on the back filter, anything like that that's creating ripples and having the water move around at the surface and breaking up that tension is surface agitation. What that does is that helps to oxygenate the aquarium. In other videos, and I'll put a link up here, I've talked about how that works and um, you know how dissolved oxygen gets into the uh, water column. But an air stone in an aquarium does a great job because the bubbles, they flow up obviously, as you can see here. When they get to the surface, they pop. Every time they pop at the surface, they are creating some type of wave within that uh, that uh, the surface of the water, breaking the tension and allowing the gas exchange. So they do a great job of oxygenating a tank. Another great thing that air does in your cram is it does help with water movement. So yes, surface agitation is necessary to break that tension in the surface to get some type of uh, oxygen, dissolved oxygen into the water column. But there are other ways of doing that. For example, if you had a sump with a wet dry uh, kind of trickle tower, um, you might have a lot of oxygenation happening down below and then when it goes through the baffles and pumps back into your aquarium you may not have any disturbance at the aquarium level and your, and your water might still be agitated enough to have some dissolved oxygen. However, you're still going to need water movement. So, you know, what you want to make sure of in your aquarium is that you have water moving in some type of circular motion, whether it be like this or around, so that you don't have any dead pockets. What happens with dead pockets in aquariums is a couple of things. One thing is that you'll get a lot of buildup of detritus. So detritus is kind of like that waste that you find in your aquarium, whether it be uh, fish waste, um, food waste remnants, etc. So you'll kind of get pockets of that kind of sitting in one spot. And if you don't have any movement in your aquarium, that will kind of become like a nasty pile. The other thing that uh, having good water movement uh, allows for in your aquarium is to ensure that the temperature is consistent throughout all parts of your tank. Now down here, my room is heated, but that is not common. So it's, uh, it's a little bit cold right now because I had the door open for a while trying to get some fresh air in here. So it's, uh, it's only about 75 degrees right now. But if I, when I close the door and uh, have it uh, you know, sectioned off, it gets to be about 80 degrees in here. It was about 80 degrees when I came down here. So all of my tanks stay around 78 degrees or so because the, the uh, ambient temperature of the room is 80 degrees. So my tanks are consistently heated throughout the entire tank. However, upstairs I have, uh, I don't heat the room because it's my whole house and I can't heat 2,300 square feet of living space to heat a few fish tanks, that's ridiculous. And of course we would be miserable if the house was 80 degrees all of the time. So I have heaters in my aquarium. Sometimes I keep them in my sumps or I'll have them actually in the tank. However, if I didn't have any type of water circulation, for example, with a heater in a tank, you would have one part of the tank that is very warm where the heater is and the other part of the tank that is much cooler further away from the heat. Now you're always gonna have a little bit more heat next to the heater, obviously, because it's right there where the heater is you know, releasing its heat and uh, it's you know, in close proximity to the heater. But if you have good water movement, that is getting mixed around so that all areas of the aquarium are relatively the same temperature, which is better for the fish. Now there are countless benefits of having an air pump and an air stone or a sponge filter in your aquarium. Those are just a couple of things that I wanted to highlight that you might not have thought of and uh, hopefully that will uh, sway you in the direction of possibly putting an air pump and an air stone in your aquarium. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.